Shall we start? Are we ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. the creme de la creme of the CE meeting. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is a very yes. Yes. This is a VIP session. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was put specifically at this time slot that other interesting things happening so that they will not come and it's just us, the VIP people that are participating. I like it. Yes. <laughs> that's the only way that that's the only reason why we don't have people. Okay, so thank you for deciding to join on today's session on uh, crafting connections. That should be actually the main title because that is what I always aim for in uh, creating communities and crafting connections with people. But today we're going to talk how we're going to do that, how we're going to achieve that by unveiling the art of strategic PR and communications. Okay? Uh, how many of you have you had done up to now any? the PR communication session or at least. Fantastic. Okay. Almost all. Almost all. Almost all. That's good. So this means I'm going to have to upgrade the level. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To knowledgeable people. Okay. So first, for those who don't know me, I am Anna Prodromo. My username is A Prodromo and I come from the user group, the community of user group in Cyprus. And um, Cyprus is one, and we are representing uh, Cyprus uh, in the Wikimedia movement by editing in uh, uh, three languages, in uh, Greek, uh, Turkish, and English. So we have active contributors, not a lot, but you know, slowly, slowly we're getting uh, bigger in uh, all of these three languages. And I, I could have added many, many other hats, let's say, to this slide, but first, and most importantly here, I am as a member of the Wikimedia community. But I would like to add about the foundation, which is, again, uh, supporting always our, uh, our efforts in Cyprus. And we are working on promoting women's rights, but we go beyond women's rights and other uh, uh, communities, such as the LGBTQ plus community, asylum seekers, and we, uh, the foundation is involved with all the projects that Wikimedia Cyprus is running. So, um, I want you to read the line. I, I, I changed it yesterday, to be honest. Yeah, and my, the reasoning that I changed is it, it, because I got very frustrated. <laughs> and when I get very frustrated with something, I try to turn it into a positive thing rather than getting upset because that's part of being able to communicate with other people rather than uh, reacting to a negative thing that happened I, I just said maybe I'm, I should do better in how uh, helping humans to human better okay especially in the AI era so and uh, now of course that's how we're gonna start uh, I'm gonna give you uh, you're gonna randomly pick one of these uh, papers okay it's a question that I want you to have uh, just 30 seconds to think about it. But what is uh, most important is to answer with one word, maximum two, only if what you need to say cannot be otherwise communicated with one word, and you need to use two, okay? So.
Are we ready? So basically to the newcomer, <laughs> I just introduced myself. I am Anna, I come from Cyprus. And uh, I like sorry? In Mexico. Excellent ah, <laughs> guy. So um, you I you read the question on the paper. Yes. And you have to answer with one word or maximum two if uh, the, if uh, what the reply doesn't uh, cannot be expressed in one word okay so i want we will start and uh, i just want to first of all to say your name the community that you're coming from and then read us a question and answer um, hi everyone my name is uh, zahra and i'm coming also from the Cypriot uh, media community so my question was, what's one word that describes your favorite book? I would say historical. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Jana, I'm coming from Wikimedia Makata Bastogne community. My question is, uh, what's one word you'd use to describe your sense of book humor? And I really don't know. I'm hurting <laughs> you. Come on, words. You want to I have a humor at all? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm not funny, you know. No, I really don't know. Let's say what to say. Maybe they don't know your stage it's name clear. because it's two words. No. Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> but please, <laughs> like, this is some exception so we can move on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, and if by the end of the answers you have, please uh -huh. share, okay? Uh, hi everyone, my name is Boyan. I'm coming from Macedonia, Wikimedia Model Organization. So the question is, what is your biggest motivation? <laughs> Very difficult question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 that is three words. Exactly. Thank you for planning. That is three words. That's any, and, okay. Now I'm changing the rules and you cannot give the same answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Money, love, uh, holiday. Oh, love. Love. Oh, okay. Awesome. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> what the? <laughs> hey, <it's> sweet. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Uh, hi, my name is Vlad. Vlad Zimmer. Vlad Short. I'm from Belarus. And uh, my question is what's one word that describes your morning routine? Uh, your morning routine. 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 Morning routine. Uh, in Belarus, it's Apple. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, I eat, uh, uh, yeah, I eat actually like it's actually two things. Uh, how do you call this? Uh, cottage cheese and apple. Those are like oh, okay. No matter what, <coughs> like, I always. But you prioritize apple. That yeah, because an apple a day is not too. Yes. Uh, I'm Andre. I'm from Slovenia. What's one word that describes your perfect day? Was the question that my perfect day is happy. Happiness. Okay, nice. Good. So it's good to wake up with that thought. And to get into bed with this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Happiness. Good. Barbara? Uh -huh. So my name is Barbara from Croatia. And see, huh? what's the first thing you think of when you hear weekend? Oh. Uh, weekend. Weekend. Yeah, weekend. Like the end of the week. <laughs> no, it, 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 it with the cold, it is weird. Ah, you mean weekend, like end of the week, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know why you're saying cold. Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Free yes. at last. Free at last. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm Tony, I'm coming from Macedonia, working with the Barra, with Barra in the Sea Hub. What's the first word that comes to mind when you think of summer? Sweat. Sweat. <laughs> mosquitoes. Swimming? No, swimming. Mosquitoes. Uh, we are living in Copia, we don't have sea. So uh, we are yeah. not swimming. Sweating? Swimming in sweat. Sweat is like yeah, something. It's like going to the sea. On a daily basis. Sweat. 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 Yeah, it's on a ba daily basis. You cannot escape. Like, I don't know. Yeah. What what you're gonna do? I will sweat today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Um, so I'm Haigarush Minasia. I'm uh, I'm coming from Greece, but uh, I'm uh, 
Yes, I'm in language. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, my uh, the question is, what's one word that captures your current mood? Happy to find them. What was one question that captures your current mood? Current mood. Current mood. Happy. 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 Yeah, yeah. To I happiness. Uh, you found the room, you're here. So basically, uh, with, uh, with the happiness, um, Apple. So <laughs> and um, okay, a little bit we are sweating. <laughs> the AC is not uh, at its best. Uh, so, but, but we are free. Free. Uh, yeah, freedom. Freedom. Ah, freedom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, a bit of history here. Yeah, history, will. Yes. And uh, love. Love, above all, and I don't know where that is going to lead us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. So, so I'm going to read it loud. So for the people that are uh, seeing us and they cannot read it on the slide. And if I am to speak for 10 minutes, I need a week for preparation. If 15 minutes, three days. If half an hour, two days. If an hour, I am ready now. And this is a quote from Thomas Woodrow also, which was a former president uh, in the United States. So I want your comments on that, and how do you see that relating to the exercise that we did in the beginning to get to know each other? Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that it's uh, depends on the for for us who are speaking in public or having the lectures or something. It's about the theme, subject. Of, if the subject is very uh, very familiar for me, so I can I'm ready now. <laughs> and uh, uh, sometimes, yes, ten minutes you prepare a long uh, long because you know, to say everything in ten minutes is not just like that. You know, ten minutes you you have to. Uh, to squeeze everything in ten minutes. So that's the. That's why you need the week. I yeah. Think. Thank you. I think the point is the is the fact that he he was speaking about one exact and same subject, and he was thinking uh, only about the let's say term limit in terms of uh, minutes and hours that he had available to him to cover the topic. So he was thinking of how to squeeze the same amount of exact message, not just information, message to, to be had. And so for him it was really hard in terms of delivering the message. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else for so? Yes. 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 More you speak, more time. It's easier because you can even sometimes you repeat, you repeat and you, you turn around. More you want the more you have less time and you, you, it's more difficult but it's more proper so you can just put your ideas just give them without the blah blah or adjectives or this exactly and uh, this is so important that's why in this exercise because it will be easy to, to tell you just answer the question and then you could be talking for much longer you know and and using a lot of words to describe something, sometimes it sounds helpful when we have time to ourselves to ex time to express what we want. But a lot of times, if I don't say many times, we're just talking uh, for no reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can really sum up something in one or two sentences and really convey a message. But concision is very, very hard in communication. And we feel that communication, it is innate in us and we are born uh, with uh, this ability to communicate but it, it is quite one, one of the hardest thing to for the communication to be successful so let's start from the basics uh, because I, I two or three of you uh, three or four of you said that you already done uh, your knowledge on piano communication so let's see what you know <laughs> okay, so first we're going to start with uh, saying uh, I, we need, uh, when we're starting a conversation, we need to know that we are on the same page, you know, we, when we say communication, we talk about the same uh, thing, right? So let's start by the word communication. First of all, as I said, communication is central in how we live, right? Ever since the time that we were from 
uh, uh, in, in not ancient times, from the cave times, you know, there were, we found uh, many, many ways to communicate with each other, uh, with uh, uh, the spoken word, with the uh, sign language, with the smoke, uh, sending smoke and, and transmitting our messages. And actually, communication is very, very important because as a skill to have it, because that's the way we communicate uh, our legacy, our history, everything that all our, our achievements as humans to the next generation. Because think about it: if everything we do it, we do it by ourselves and for ourselves, then there is no we cannot perpetuate the culture and everything else that comes with it. So, how do we communicate? Can you please share? I already shared a few uh, ways of communicating. What, what does come to your mind when you think about communication and uh, some ways that you feel that you communicate? Verbal and non-verbal communication. Awesome? Yeah. What else? Online offline. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Online offline. <laughs> Online offline, yeah. When we talk verbal, what, what does come to mind? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or or speech. Speech. With the with the when you do I don't know like expressions. Some expressions. Yeah. The, exactly. Yeah. That's the the, the part of the, the case. Like oh yeah. Come, but you know, I don't have to say come. Everyone understand. But we. Go away or then sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you just mm. say straightforward what you mean. Sometimes it's like with hidden message or between the lines. Mm -hmm. And usually the first thing that we say when we think about communication, it's the spoken word. That's yes, the first thing. Every time we say verbal and we keep forgetting that for other people, other groups of people, like people that are um, vision impaired, they will think of uh, brain because that's the way to communicate. For the people that have a hearing in, in, in impairments, in, they will have sign language as the means of communication. So the primary way of communication is not actually verbal, it's just verbal because a big um, part of, uh, of uh, the humanity of people can uh, use the spoken word as the primary measure of uh, medium of communication. So as you said, you were very good, we have the spoken, we have the verbal which is uh, the way the, our speech and the words we're using, the paraverbal, the paraverbal is the tone of our voice the intonation, you know, all those things that I cannot uh, uh, stop uh, repeating, those things that makes us interesting. Because if we keep on the same tone at the same time, yeah, it's like very hard to put people to sleep. So you have to, you know, you have to, you know, to have some pitches in your voice, intonation, you know, make it more vibrant, you know, and catch people by surprise sometimes, you know, with the, you know, wake them up a bit if they fall asleep. So then it's the non-verbal, as we said, is the body language, the facial expression, the very famous eye-rolling thing that uh -huh. we need to master, you know? Yeah. Uh, because we think we're not doing it, but we are doing it. I, I, to me, that, that was the biggest struggle. I don't know if, you, uh, if there is something that you identify in yourselves that you're doing, that you, you feel that you're doing it and you wish you, you didn't do it, right? For me, it was the rolling, uh, eyes rolling. Yeah, I catch myself, you know, doing it, and uh, you know, uh, <laughs> exactly. And I think, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm not gonna comment on uh, on some people that I know are doing it. It's okay, and uh, and of course the written word. Okay, so the written word it can be. It's very easy now for you because most communication is written, so you can roll your eyes as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but they added that emoji, emoji, whatever they call it, with rolling eyes, so you, when you really want to send a message that that's what I'm doing right now, you can use that, right? Yeah. So there are ways, because sometimes we need to, that's, a, it, it's, it's expressing an emotion, and emotions should be kind of expressed, of course, uh, with always uh, being respectful. So, message in the bottle, yeah. What does that mean? Why do I have a message in the bottle? Message that is sent to someone, I don't know to whom. Message sent to someone? I know. 
Okay. All right. Any other ideas? Hide the message message which is uh, because it's traveling too long in the some, some time. Secret. Uh, secret. secret. Yes. Yeah. Message that you don't want to open and you just ah, you don't want to open. <laughs> Maybe it's something that is uh, let's say has a very little chance of being delivered. Not just uh, when you don't have the exact uh, receiver or destination but you see the like ninety percent of uh, the chance uh, is to basically literally nowhere, literally, not just in here. very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask. So, so it's basically like sending a message to to yourself in reality, then uh, giving it a thought without uh, speaking or even with speaking. So you, you yeah. have to write it down in order to come down. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes. So is this? Uh, I want you to raise your hand. Is this communication? Yeah. Yes. Potentially. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to see hands with people that I uh, say yes. This is communication. Low probability of communication. But communication, yes. <laughs> I would say it's like one-sided, so I would say exactly. Not. So this is especially the idea that the Zach said about not opening. No. What did you say? That you don't want other people to yeah. open. Yeah. Hidden. Yeah. Because you mentioned that or yeah. that. You know from the beginning that there's a low probability yeah. that someone's going to open it. So basically, that is not really communication because communication always needs to be in a circle. It's a it's a circle. This is communication, but it's not completed communication. Yes. And uh, this reminds me of uh, one of my therapy sessions when you need to let go of something, so you just write it and just throw it. Wow. Um, okay, that's the only way that this is considered. But it's exactly, you're throwing it away, so you're, you're throwing it emotionally away, so you're not actually communicating. Because communication, it needs what it does. It needs a medium, which we have the medium, is the paper, okay? So we wrote something, we wrote on the paper, but when is this gonna be completed? Only if, if someone... Under if many conditions, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so the, the, the communication yeah. is completed, if someone opens it, yeah. and what and it reacts to it. Exactly, and it reacts to it. Okay, so if someone opens it and doesn't understand, then again, it's not uh, oh, communication. So, why ah, am I. Uh, I sorry yeah. to interrupt yeah, you. No. Once when we were on a sailing boat, we found a message in the bottle, a bottle. Uh, yeah. And it was, yeah. it was before internet, so it was like, let's say, in the <laughs> late 80s. We found a bottle and there was someone who maybe has a tourist. It was written in English or German, I don't remember. And someone wrote like, we threw this bottle near this island. Here is the money to send us postcard if you find it, please. <laughs> <laughs> we, we want to know uh, where, how long will it travel. So please uh, write to us if you find it. Here is the money, send us the letter and communicate where you found it. And we sent it back. So there was communication, but it's like very low chance. Yes, but it was a nice thing. So, it, it is a perfect example because there, there was really intention for yes. that to be communicated. They wanted something. Just in a creative way, right? Yeah. They, they, they chose a creative way and then you are actually replied. Yes. So that makes the communication okay. complete. It, 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 it cannot work otherwise and many, many times we don't understand that. Sorry, before democracy factors. So many times we don't understand. We think that just by expressing something, either in written form or we said something, that we communicated. But I told you so. <laughs> right? I said that. It doesn't mean anything unless the other person in any form has consented that they understood what we were talking about, then it's not really communication. Okay? So other factors in communication, which we used some uh, method, mass, and audience. I want the PR comms experts here to answer. What's method, mass, and audience? Yeah. Method is either written or uh, spoken or uh, advertising or anything. Mass is who is, I don't understand this word actually. Mass? Mm -hmm. 
And so, uh, um, message or? No, mass, mass. The size of it. Huh? The size. The audience. Yeah. No. Yes. The audience is, yeah. the audience is something else. The yeah, audience who do you target to? Either random or a specific group or just one person. So it's very important uh, who do you choose as an audience. Exactly. So, but uh, the mass, I don't know. Let's see. Ah, how many? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Why is that important? It is, isn't it? It is. Ah, nice. We had during the lunch, we had that. Uh, sorry? We had during the lunch, we had. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, we, we, we. Right. It's, it's really important. And also, um, uh, think about today that I came to present to you. I prepared, and I prepared for a, a room that could host 25 people. Okay. So, uh, so you prepare a presentation, and because I always make the workshops to be interactive, so you think that uh, you know how much time you're going to spend talking to people, you know, giving them the opportunity to express themselves. So it's totally different presenting in front of 25 people and presenting in front, in, in front of five people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the number of people, people that's how it is. We're not five, I didn't say we're five. Uh, because so you're counting us, right? We're so nine. The expected feedback is. Yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I counted, that. I counted, and yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I could see, I could read your eyes, and you're saying, no, we're not five. <laughs> okay. And the audience, okay? And this is really interesting. It says, person or people receiving the message, they affect the message too. They affect the message. Because we say something, but how our message is being perceived. That's only handled by the audience. It has nothing to do with us. Makes sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if we're... It's how, it's how, they react. how they react to it, yeah? These are, I know that these are things that you know, but it's just remind, uh, reminders because when we actually go around uh, or participate in, in groups or we talk to people or we network, we seem to forget that. Okay, that what we said is what we said. How the other person perceived it is something different. So the barriers, I already mentioned, the, the first uh, one is the private one, which means uh, the first barrier is when, when you're not prepared, right? If I came here today with no presentation, uh, or I haven't read uh, what, uh, what I should be talking about, then that's the first barrier of really achieving at least a high level of communication today, all right? So the second is the social one. Like I said, you don't know first of all if uh, people are gonna appear. You don't. You cannot control how people are gonna uh, receive uh, your message. And the environmental has anything to do with things that are in uh, in the surroundings, like whether the hall is uh, quiet enough so that people can hear you, whether the temperature is good enough that they feel comfortable, uh, like staying for an hour and a half, or they just want to leave, because these are very important things that we need to have in mind. Okay. And as I said, why I keep uh, saying these things? <laughs> because the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. <laughs> That's where all our problems started. That we thought that we communicated, okay? So every single time, we need to take in consideration what is, uh, what is the, uh, it has our message been received by the other person and uh, how, if it's been understood. Okay? Even if it's negatively received, but maybe we said something negative, so we achieved uh, a goal, right? Okay, so let's go now to PR. In the beginning, I'm just going to do the terms so we know what we're talking about. What is PR? Think about, uh, uh, you see this bottle of uh, pills? <laughs> yep. So if uh, someone, uh, if I came today and had the full sample of these bottles with pills, okay, and uh, I say, um, you know, these are amazing. I mean, honestly, and if, if you feel that the stomach pain or you have a headache, uh, depending, or it could be on a private, uh, you know, someone says, I don't really think very well, and I just open this bottle with no, nothing uh, uh, outside. And I tell you, I think it's very good, and uh, many, many people have tried it, and they saw miraculous change and stuff like that. Would you take the pill? No. No. <laughs> no. No. 
Of course, I think you're lying a bit because how many times did you took a pill from a friend that just said it works for me? No. Uh, maybe, no. maybe, and you didn't even no. see the box. I, no? I, no. I barely even drink. Uh, no. Uh, pills. Yes. 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 So, okay, wrong example. <laughs> 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 yes. So, you see, yes. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the next example. No, I don't have another example, but this will work because actually I wanted you to say no. I didn't want you to but say for no. Every, for every person it has example. Yes, yes. No, but actually, the, 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 let's say the correct answer is no, right? You shouldn't. But I'm joking when I said it. Uh, but I did, I have to admit that if I have someone, a friend that's gonna say, you know, sometimes they do take out of their bag something and they say, what is it, you know, or I used to do it, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, I used to do it, I don't anymore. Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to make comfortable someone that already did it at some point in their lives so they don't feel uncomfortable. No, and no, no, never. And why? Why you shouldn't take it? There must be reasoning behind it because it is a uh, PR advertising for the bills. <laughs> No, what do you mean is PR? Oh, okay. No, forget it, that's a title. No, okay, we're talking okay, just yeah. title for the But the person is advertising the, the, the pills. That's the advertisement for pills. Yeah. Hey, this is very good for candy, for stomach. No, and, and it's a friend, it's someone that you know. It's not a, it's not a you know, a representative of a salesperson, a representative from first of the class. It's not writing anything. Maybe the first reason is actually because I'm not ill. Like, even if it's uh, best, the best part is the in the world, if I'm not having high temperature, it doesn't matter who advertises it to me. I just don't need it in the first place. Mm -hmm. The second thought is already like, yeah, like, uh, everything else. But the first thought is just pills are for uh, a disease. If mm -hmm. I don't have a disease, like don't wh whatever advertisement you have, like you simply don't need it. It's like, I don't know, selling uh, in a swimming suit to a duck, you know. <laughs> okay. So you're a healthy person. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Any other ideas? So for me, I would not take it because from like small age, my parents taught me not to take it because I'm a medicine. Especially okay. medicine. So for you, it doesn't even if it was a box of uh, a box of chocolate. I mean, just a piece. Sorry. Uh, even for food, yeah, yes. They taught me like this. <laughs> Anybody else wants to add something? No? I would uh, research, sorry. Yeah. I uh, research or like uh, reading reviews of other people I would, uh, for everything. I, I, I'm going to do that. Mm. So basically, what is lacking here? Because you do take meds, right? Yeah, but only prescribed under certain conditions. Mm. So okay. you need like instructions. All right. So can you use the right word, prescribed. Yes. So a person prescribes it, and then you go to the pharmacy and you get it, and the box says something on it. Yeah. Yes, it's explanation, instructions. Yeah. yeah. Well, basically, the idea of medication is that basically the disease is something you've got to kill inside yourself. You basically like kill something, right? If you you don't take it when you want it. Like it's not a thing on the candy, right? It's just I would have to. Like I have no other choice. I mean, like the thinking should be like from okay. the point of view that uh, it's like cutting. Like yeah, it's another example, but it's like cutting your hand. Would you cut uh, your hand just because someone said like it's a fancy deal today or whatever? You know? Like okay. why should I do it? Because I know that there is a I don't know bacteria, a living thing that will be dead, but. Uh, and I will harm some of my body, uh, but to survive, basically. But I should not do it uh, okay. the other way around. But we have to admit at some point, yeah. Sorry. I will ask you, is it good? <laughs> is it good? <laughs> Does yeah. it taste good, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we have some, uh, two days ago, I was eating some people in Slovenia, we have from Kirka. It's uh, bitter bean with vitamins, but it's really good. Mm. It's sweet and I like it. Yeah, so, because, yeah, and I, and I said it's pills. I didn't say that they are for uh, a disease. No, it might be vitamins. Yeah, it oh, oh, no. yeah, vitamins. Yeah. Okay, so basically what we're missing here, it's the link between um, what's in the bottle and you to uh, uh, make you feel comfortable, be able to use it, okay? Yeah. And that link is public relations. And 
that's why you do many, many things that you think in the beginning that you you think that you wouldn't do it because public relations is establishing that link between an, an entity, an organization, and the product or the service that they want to uh, offer. And I see some puzzled faces, so we will continue and we will explain better. By Wikipedia, of course. <laughs> Here is the practice of managing the spread of information between an individual or an organization and the public. Basically, first of all, is, is public relations, right? The first thing that we need to clarify, because there is this misunderstanding, when we talk about public relations, people uh, think that it's advertisement or it's marketing. Public relations have nothing to do with, uh, uh, with marketing. We, as the communication um, field is evolving, we can see that the, the lines in between are a bit blurry. I do understand that. But there's a, a very clear line. The very clear line is that PR is uh, public relations is earn, earned media, earned attention. Advertise is always paid. So one simple way to have it very clear in your mind whether now we need advertising or we're doing marketing for something and when we're doing PR is because we never pay when it's PR. Okay, PR it has that much work earned. So you work for it. So usually when you want to uh, con uh, when you want to communicate your message, and now I'm gonna um, give a very solid example of how we can do that in our communities. So you are doing an amazing work in, in, in the community, but somehow not that you're not reaching out to many people to know what you're doing. So one option is then is uh, through marketing and advertisement, and uh, you can you know start writing social media to pay the social media you know pay the through uh, and, and share it. You can uh, pay for, uh, I don't know, are, are you allowed to do like a paid advertisement? I think you mm -hmm. could, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, there is that option. But uh, PR is a totally different thing. PR is uh, that effort, that, that, um, that work that you put out before by establishing your organization as something important so that other people will talk about it. Okay, so it can start from advertising sometimes or from marketing campaigns, or it can start just by you yourself as the leader of a group or one member of your community writes an article about uh, uh, Wikipedia and what it can do and then that is being shared, okay, by other people. When it's been shared by other people, that's, and you're not paid for, that is when you see that your efforts are really giving results. But the biggest achievement, if some people that, especially journalists, pick up on what you're doing, and they're sharing it as their own stories, and talk about you, okay? But that requires a lot of effort in a, in a community, and sometimes we think that it's this, huge thing that cannot be done, but it can be done, and it only requires, you know, uh, an effort, of, like a time. It, it is time consuming, but it's not money consuming, okay? So, uh, one thing that you need to know if you're reaching to, um, especially to journalists, is that, first of all, you all know that, uh, the, as I said, the environment has changed. Now, we don't really rely on, uh, on a newspaper, either online or hard copy to talk about us, we have social media, so we are creating content, so you you have more than journalists to influence, you have influencers, let's say, or people that are um, academics, that are uh, their field is related to what we're doing as a community, and you want to reach out to them, so you have to, we have to remember that traditional media, first of all, are not the way they used to be, okay? The other thing that I, I put as an example is, uh, is journalists. Sometimes we are planning an event and we think that just by writing a press, press release 
and sending it, you know, we're going to reach to our goal. But that's very hard because journalists receive thousands of emails every day. And later in the workshop, we will learn how to make those messages more effective. So this is what I was trying to say before. The members of the public learn how much attention they should pay to an issue or topic based on the emphasis given to it by the media. Uh-huh. Right? So if the media is given So that's, the, that's how PR is. You're starting it by talking about what you're doing, but when, when you do a nice PR campaign and people start picking up on it and others are talking about it, that's when others show attention because you're not selling. You're, you surpass that uh, uh, point where you're kind of uh, selling. Because let's be honest, when we talk about something that interests us and we want to, you know, uh, we're preaching to the unconverted, <laughs> right? And we're kind of selling in a way, right? Even if we're passionate about it and it's not monetized. So the moment that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really something to pay attention to is when other people are talking about it, okay? So we need to remember that other people can do PR for us as well. Okay, so how do we do oh, PR stories? I promise you this is going to end and we're going to go into more interesting uh, things, uh, more practical. So first of all, PR, good PR stories are about people and not institutions. Think about um, you want to talk about, uh, uh, do a campaign just to let people know about what you're doing in the community. It's so boring to just write, we did this and we did that, right? But if you're focusing every time on one person of your community and their achievements, that will pick up more attention because you put a human behind the story and not the organization as a whole. That is just one example about how when we focus on people, we get better results. And that is also not only about groups like ours, it works for businesses as well. You know, people don't relate to organizations, they relate to other people, so it's very important. And you see now many organizations are, are, are not pushing, let's say, are supporting their uh, employees who have LinkedIn profiles and stuff like that, so that you know they have ambassadors rather than that. So people want to connect with that specific person that I like what the, he or she or they then write on LinkedIn, right? Uh, rather than I just saw paid advertisement and okay, same or same or. So they establish and resolve a conflict. All these we're going to see them a bit uh, later. It's, they always have to be a bit intriguing, right? Uh, are moving, are not static, and this is the line. So a great story gives us great content, engages people, and people share great content, right? So you have, we have to think of a story that uh, that from that story we will have we could be able to uh, create produce good or great content that will engage people and those people are going to share what uh, what we said what we wanted to share. I will not uh, do that because we will see it uh, later. The art of storytelling because what. What is there more important than tell people stories? Right? Ever since we were kids, uh, we grow up by people telling us stories, right? And this is what uh, we like when before we go to bed, someone would read us stories through, uh, throughout our life. We learn how to live through stories, not by just sharing facts. This is what happens if you do this, this is going to happen. We create a narrative around what we're going to say and create compelling uh, content. So, rhetoric, the three means of persuasion. Anybody heard about this before? What was this word? Ethos is, I don't know. Ethos. People. Ethos, ne, ethos. So, we ethos. said logos, you said it's? Words. Words. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Ethos? Ethics, basically. <laughs> Something that is. Mm-hmm. Something that is <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's very really easy. Yeah. We can go back. Sorry, this is annoying, but I don't know how to. Uh, what is that? Uh, a lot of space needs uh, the word uh, reason, reason. reasoning. Uh-huh. When you uh-huh. try to find the reason. Uh-huh. So it's what, reasonable. What is the reason? What, what sorry? The? Uh, reasonable. Uh, Which one is that? Logos, logos. Yes. Yeah. Rational. And 
pathos, it's not pathological, but it's like, you know, like, oh, it's driving me crazy, it's uh, yeah, like, something uh, like But uh, actually, uh, this is the things that in Belarus, at least, like, everyone is trying to escape from. So from you know, what? From, from the third one, the pathos. <laughs> because it's uh, like, uh, many people, even in social media, media when you write about yourself, they like the first thing when you find the Russian on Facebook, you should write uh, without pathos, something like this, right? no pathos. Right? Ah, with okay, ah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they rather choose bloggers. That's boring if there is no pathos in the Yeah, bloggers, <laughs> yeah, they uh, either choose bloggers or ethos, at least, or, but, but not pathos somehow. Okay. That's why maybe it's the third one, like the last, the last one. Let's see what that is. <laughs> when we talk at, at the least the way that uh, we're gonna interpret it here. Yeah, could it be? Emotions. Ethos. Okay, ethos is the credibility or authority of the presenter. Is when you how what people basically know about you. Okay, that works as your ethos. Before you even appear in a room, what people are, tell, uh, uh, are saying it's about you. reputation. Yeah, wow. yeah, which is very, very important, right? Mm -hmm. And because of this, uh, of the format of the session, usually I use that very much in the beginning of my presentations. And uh, yes, because that's how people, you know, you attract the attention because people need to know why is she standing before us and talking to us? Yeah. Uh, what has she done? Listen to her. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's very important. That is a bit, that's why we are paying attention to this person talking because we know these things about them. Okay. And even if we don't know about uh, these things uh, about them before, that's how we create. Uh, we put ethos into the conversation by talking about ourselves. Okay. Not in the uh, how do you say? in the narcissistic form, <laughs> okay? And be very concise, you know, choose those two, three things depending on your audience that they're gonna appeal to them. Okay, logos is reasoning and logical appeal, okay? So it's not words. Sorry? <laughs> it's not words, as I said, words. words. Yes, no, 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 because logos... logos is a person who is uh, teaching others how to speak. Yes, in, yes, in this context, that, that is not, because even yeah, in plain okay. language, uh, yeah, yeah. okay, so reasoning and logical appeal, and that could mean that we put some facts into what we're talking. We always back it up with data. So first of all, we all, all, always have to have in mind when we are, because what we're doing now, we're starting to see the elements of a good story, okay? First of all, we need to communicate who we are and why our opinion matters, then we have to back up what we're talking with some kind of information, even if even if it's saying like 20% of people that participated in my uh, seminars were bored, <laughs> or less than 5%. And, and pathos in a, is an appeal to audience emotions because if the uh, audience does not engage with you emotionally, then you're not getting anywhere. Okay. So, sum it up, ethos has to do with authority of the, and has to do with the speaker. Logos is the reason and the logic, and it has to do with the message, okay? It's how we pack our message. And pathos always has to do with the audience, is what the speaker uh, uh, evokes in the audience. It's not how I'm feeling as a speaker, it's how I make you feel, okay? Because it doesn't matter how I feel. I might be set sweating inside, which I'm sweating outside as well. Uh, it's a bit hot in the room. Can we do something with this? Can we say, yeah, open? Oh, we can just open the door. <laughs> About ethos. Yeah, ethos, ethos. So authority of the speaker. But when, uh, for example, I'm thinking, when, when is our PR? Yeah. Community in the so when he's uh, uh, writing an article about some our activities are sent to the to the media. Yeah. So I'm thinking now about the ethos of the media, not the authority of speaker or, or whatever. Oh yeah, that's also. 
like uh, if he if uh, he reaches yellow pages and then they come up with our activities as well. Because we can yeah. build on okay. have enough attention as in some uh, very well established media. Please uh, re repeat again. So, yeah, okay. so yeah, the ethos is of the speaker. The, the writer yeah. of the of the the speaker is not the speaker who is speaking, no, but it's no, writing. Yeah. And when it's writing, it doesn't matter who write it, but uh, which uh, which newspaper will uh, publish it. So it is. Yes. Oh. Yeah. But let's start from the beginning. There is authority of the newspaper. Yeah, but let's start from the beginning. The fact that what have you have you created credibility around your community? So when you write something, let's start from that. First of all, we we work on that uh, small uh, circle. You as a community, you created uh, you are a credible organization, okay. and that's why they pick it up. When when a journalist let's say picks it up and they write, the, the journalist itself is a speaker. Okay. And depending on his his credibility, so let yeah. let's think that okay. I'm gonna give a bit of an extreme example, but let's say that uh, there was an article published on one on a Wikimedia. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about yellow oh. pages or uh, established good uh, newspaper. So they are credibility. Ah, uh, yellow pages. Now I see what you mean. Not yeah, 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 yeah. the no, right. yellow pages. Yeah, I am uh, honestly. I I'm 53. When I yeah, I lived through the Yellow Pages area. <laughs> it was just the Yellow Pages, you know, yes. that you open. Now I see you mean um, uh, media organizations that yes. are big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was thinking Yellow Pages, Yellow Pages doesn't work. Okay. Exactly. There are authority which is uh, very. Yeah. Also, it's very important. It's very important. And uh, also, let's say you uh, you wrote something and you are being praised by a politician that goes towards the far right, let's say. Ah, yeah, that, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, so, we so it right. depends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it is very important who writes about you. First of all, you build credibility of your own organization, yeah. and then that goes to the next person or organization that talks about you, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yes, okay. in that case, that's the speaker. and. Uh, yeah, and in order for them to make it a compelling message, or you to start with the initial message, you need to make sure that you have established credibility as an organization, but also you can use, let's say you have people, now we are, we are all, um, we're not only, uh, how to say, using social media, we're avid users of social media, but we are creators at the same time. Mm -hmm. And in, in every, trust me, in every community, there are people that are, I mean, we have our influencer Zahra. <laughs> I mean, or think about it, Zahra, uh, through her own personal media, she uh, addresses a, a different audience that I address from, my, from her Instagram account, let's say. She addresses two different audiences than me from my LinkedIn account. Okay, so again, my credibility as a professional, sometimes for some events, let's say that I'm gonna run, it's much better if I share them rather than I share them through the organization. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or both. So it's, we play around with that when it comes to the speaker. And then, and we all always try whatever we say that to, to be, Backed up by science or fact or uh, facts, you know, and to be able to for some people to evoke an emotion, any kind of emotion, preferably the emotion that we want to evoke when we first start the planning. Oops, sorry. So now we need the voice. I don't know if we, you can hear it. We will try. It. I have a video. Let's see. Okay, so uh, Joshua Bell, let me remember, he's um, Boston's, yeah, he basically is the Boston Symphony Hall, okay? And so Joshua Bell is a very renowned uh, musician, uh, plays uh, in the Boston uh, Orchestra. A lot of people are, uh, he's known by a lot of people. And uh, let's hear, let's try to see, I hope you will be able to hear. Did you 
Okay, I will explain. So he's playing in the metro. Uh, I know about this. Yeah, no one is. Uh, okay. Oh. So it was basically an, uh, an experiment. It was an experiment, but I want you to. Sorry, if you it would be much easier if you could hear the, the video. Okay, that's it. I was summing up because now it's the interview, but since we cannot. for kids without uh, parents and uh, they would sometimes I was doing it for free for uh, like run here so they would show up or not so it was very I was there coming each week so it was very I mean they were not obliged but it was something useful and it was for free it would do them something good and okay response was there but not a lot but then when I was charging next year money then people were calling me and they were able to find time because uh -huh, you are paying, this is great something, I know what's happening. Yeah, Sometimes people they, don't see the value if it's not connected, unfortunately, with something monetary. If you know, you, as a person who offers that service, have an added value to what you are. Because you use the word value, so you didn't, you did not, by no charging, you didn't uh, add value to what you were. Yes. Exactly. And of course, and that, even that builds credibility yeah. and authority, right? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's the, and, and of course you answered my question of why weren't people stopping, what was, what was the ingredient out of the drink that was missing in this setting, and you said that it was? What ethos? Ethos, ethos, because nobody knew uh, Risky. Yeah, who he was, and that is so important because we might be uh, sharing very important, our message might be amazing, but if people don't know anything about us, it doesn't matter, right? And that is very uh, important. So I don't know what to do with the second one, which is a video, and uh, it will not work uh, without uh, listening to it. It's not like that one, so I am just, I'm gonna uh, uh, skip it. Let's see what I'm doing. I only have 15 minutes, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so basically this was uh, about Obama. This was a, a speech about uh, Obama that uh, I would we would listen it and we would do a group uh, action to identify where he's using these three elements. All great speakers, and it doesn't mean that I agree with the content. Okay, when I say great yeah. speakers, yeah. because oh, Obama, it, he is a great speaker, whether we disagree or agree with what he's saying, and he uses a lot of these elements. And so I have this, okay, the light is not helping us at uh, all. So let's, uh, let's quickly say uh, which one of the three elements these advertisements are using. You're building to a motion, little kitten or something? Uh, a lot of silhouette, right? Mm-hmm. Ethos and uh, feelings. Yeah. Pops. 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 Right? Yeah. It's yeah. very clear. Mm. Yeah. And uh, it's very clear because here we see numbers, statistics, you know, I mean, you cannot use <laughs> but it says, yeah. It's not only the price, that is also what it says underneath, you know, 50% of that. And, uh, and then we have Jennifer Aniston, which we, we yeah, only yeah. are interested in <laughs> drinking the smart water. I mean, honestly, it's just uh, Jennifer Aniston. It's, <laughs> it. it's what she's promoting. And yes, correctly, this is uh, how was it? I have the, another. Yeah. OK. So we have five percentages, lots of words and information, ethos, and pathos. The, the best thing, especially because today I am mostly uh, talking about creating stories uh, and stories that are going to come in written form or sometimes in a form of a speech, have to have all three elements. Okay? For people to react to you, you have to have all the three elements. Ah, Greta. No, we will not have Greta. I'm sorry, I'm doing a little videos to wake people up, but then you know that in this room we won't be able to to use this. Okay. So again, just summing up what PR is. Just a second to see I am someone just to do an exercise. Okay. So as we said, it's the practice of managing the spread of information. It's very important what are stories. Uh, always think about it as storytelling. One little feature, uh, for example, PR is built, built on earning uh, for having your story feature. Because, like, uh, what I have discovered myself, there are not only academics, but certain people who are already leaders of institutions, and they actually say, I'm not working for free to cover the stories for your television channel or for your organization uh -huh. as a journalist. I'm not going to earn you a salary. No, You've got to pay me to give you, for example, an interview. So this is a, maybe another level or something. No, that is not PR. Ah, That's okay. what we need to very, very, be very clear. Yeah. So even uh, when the actual, actual person <coughs> that delivers the message in the interview, yeah. he does not pay himself for the interview, but when he is paid for the interview. Just for the fact that, because he is an academic and uh, he is saying like, I get paid for my lectures, I get paid for uh, my uh, stories being delivered, like for presentations. Yes. Okay. So this is not PR again. Right? No, this is not PR. You're okay. being paid So it's to between PR. like... But the journal is that... Being that paid both is not PR. Yeah, let's say, I'm, uh, let's say someone here in the audience yeah. uh, came to me uh, and, uh, and said... Let's say I was paid to, do, to yeah. run this and someone from the audience... Uh, Logos, 5% uh, of uh, ethos and 5% of pathos. We should aim to make them bigger so that more people will be interested in participating uh, into those sessions. Okay, that is very important. In a balanced tech talk, which is our uh, effort, because it is a tech talk, but we cannot avoid 
uh, talking with numbers uh, and, uh, and about uh, and graphs and stuff like that, but we need to uh, leverage the other percentage so that people uh, connect with us, okay? And we are, are more appealing to a wider audience than, than, just, than just the tech people. And a typical TED talk, you know TED talk, mm -hmm. this is the recipe. That's why people go, and again, I'm not saying that this is the best way. Depending on your audience, you choose what is the best for you. But never ever leave any one, any one of the three ingredients out, because then you are not successful as a communicator. We always have to have that, we, we have all three. I don't know where, why I missed this slide, this is very important. Let's see, this quickly just to, uh, when we're doing a press release, we have to answer to this who, where, when, and why. Um, I think you have this uh, in mind. So write something very draft and make sure that you answer those questions. So start from the end, what's your main goal, and, and go back and check yourself. Now we're talking about, uh, we are storytelling in different mediums, okay? It can be writing, visual, audio, interactive, it's always a story, or it always has to be a story. With a beginning, some kind of conflict, a resolution, okay? Uh, and for the stories, uh, sorry, it, I go a bit uh, fast here. On social media, we can use video, audios, uh, uh, social media posts that are embedded, that we have all these tools now to make our, uh, our story is more appealing, but don't stay on the surface. We need people to act, okay? And this is what I, I will leave you, and then we'll go through questions and answers. How many of you uh, usually, sorry, usually we hear what you say is more important as how you say it? And this is when you, we wanna say that, like what you say is important, you know, it's not, but it's equally important how you say it, or just as important as how we say something. <coughs> so don't just sit down and spend your time in, in writing a message and not thinking where you are addressing, and this goes for social media, and again, which social media? This goes to journalists, or this is a content of a talk, who am I to addressing to? These are the things that we always have to be clear, clear from the beginning in your talk. And obviously, I, and, and that is what we call strategic communication and PR. So what I try is like without really telling you what strategic communications and PR, try to uh, evoke to you my understanding. That's what strategic communications and PR is. Knowing from the beginning to you, to whom uh, you are addressing and how uh, and that will, uh, 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 how do I say, how, that, that's how, that will tell you how to create your message so that you have an effective communication at the end. And now we have a few minutes for questions and answers, if you had any. I was too early to ask about that. <laughs> Sorry? I was too early to ask about that, so I'm out. <laughs> okay, any other? So basically, I was so clear that uh, you understood no, everything. Like, so what? Yeah, I don't have questions, but it was very nice. And clear. discussion and comments. Yes, open. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Tony. No, it was like. Uh, Tony is a repeating uh, audience member. No, it's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really, like the message. Really, right. the, the message is uh, coming through. It's interesting. You are keeping it like uh, not too heavy, light. But I'm curious, okay, for, some, for example, sometimes you give uh, presentations, like in your case, you're allowed uh, one person now. Sometimes we are with few of us, you know, yeah. especially in the hub. And then we have different visions of how these speeches should look. I, I, I don't think maybe it's part of that, but how to make some kind of, yeah, balance in that, to have, yeah, something concrete and fact, but also not super boring, because I sometimes struggle with that, because we are with few speakers, and then everyone wants to present in a different way, and it's it's not easy to find balance between these three components, like words yes. and information, emotion, but OK. 
details. It's, it's difficult because it's, two, it's the three different uh, personalities. Yes. It's three different uh, um, communication styles. Oh, okay. Yeah. So from the beginning, one way is, which I wouldn't go that direction, is... Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.